And I'm glad that you called because you reminded me of, of two points that I think it is so imperative to make as we are reminded by Ken, and he's absolutely right. These people are staying on TV. They're making lots of money. Somehow somebody's supporting them. Somebody's filling up those arenas. Who is it? Well, this is why, boy, I, I hate to say this because I understand when it comes to theology, there's ditches on the left and there's ditches on the right. There's always ditches. But that shouldn't keep us from striving for what is biblical. What ditch am I talking about? I'm talking about the importance of theology road. We seem to have escaped that to a degree. Now, there is there are ditches on both sides of emphasizing theology. On one side, you pick which one you prefer. On one side of the emphasis on theology ditch, you've got nothing but high, uh, ivory tower theologians who don't apply scripture, they just learn it. They practice mere mental assent. They learn all about God, but they spend no time knowing God and being with God and serving God and pleasing God. Instead, they tend to get a little arrogant. They tend to be a little condescending. They tend to be the frozen chosen types who are the only ones that are going to heaven, who know everything, and yet they don't know the Savior. On the other side, you've got, well, I'll tell you what you got. You got this. Why did he need to be begotten? Because they don't know any better. They've never been taught theology, so whoa, on that ditch, going off, being able to, to consume, willing to consume any heresy. Right now I can't help but think about of a Bible preacher who was warned about things like this. Who was that preacher who was warned about false teachers? Think of a young man named Timothy. And Paul wrote to him and said, hey, you are going to have false teachers all over the place. You are going to have people that are going to be creating all kinds of heresies and false doctrines. Second Timothy, the entire book really dedicated to encouraging Timothy to preach in season, out of season, and to study to show himself approved. That's practicing theology. That's recalling the things that Paul had taught him, the scriptures. That Eunice and, uh, what's the, uh, uh, Jane, mother and grandmother taught him when he was a kid growing up. Uh, Lois. That's it. So, uh, Lois and, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm having one of those days. <laughs> recall that, the, recall those Bible teachings so that you don't get led astray, so that you teach properly, because there's going to come a time when all kinds of false, t- in fact, well, I'll look it up for you myself, because it's a wonderful piece of scripture. And you talk about prophetic, where, where Paul warned that, hey, there's going to be coming a time when these, when nobody's going to listen to true teaching. But Timothy, you hang in there. You got to do it. Second Timothy 3, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. Why did he need to be begotten? Mm-hmm. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They'll be cruel and have no interest in what is good. They will act as if they are religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. You must stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by many desires. you got to watch out for this stuff, and the way to watch out for this stuff and to know it is if we get back to emphasizing, not overemphasizing, but to emphasize the theology. And that's why I would cry out again to you pastors, to you Sunday school teachers, let's maybe shelf our purpose for a little while. And I would suggest to you that if we get back to some basic theology, um, people will figure out their purpose real quick. And it won't revolve all around me. Because when you got right theology, you don't need feel-good Christianity.